Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Karen Bender here. Welcome to this evening's webinar, Happiness Hacks, Simple Stress Management Strategies. We'll be getting started in just right on the hour, so go ahead and get settled. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, love to hear um, how you're doing this evening. If you'd like to share your dream vacation, feel free. Um, also take a minute um, if you would like to grab a piece of paper and have something to write with. Um, that I am encouraging you to write down a few things that we talk about this evening. We're going to go through a lot of different ideas for helping to manage stress. So um, having a piece of paper to write down the ones that you feel like you want to try to implement is recommended. So. Go ahead and take a moment to do that. You have a few minutes before we'll get started. And please let me know um, if you're having any challenge hearing me at all. Okay, great. Thanks for letting me know. All right, um, I don't know what time you guys have, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. It's seven o'clock my time. So um, again, welcome to the webinar. I'm Dr. Karen Bender from Whole Health Wellness Center. Happy to be sharing this presentation with you guys this evening. It's called Happiness Hacks, Simple Stress Management Strategies. And um, I'm very passionate about this topic um, as we go along, just because it's something that really can, has affected my own health um, and learning ways to really manage stress has really helped me out a lot. And I've seen it make a big difference in a lot of other people's lives as well. So my hope is that you'll be able to take down some actionable things to do um, from this webinar, maybe one or two things you're going to try to implement um, to help with your stress management. So we'll go ahead and get started. So um, just in terms of what we're going to cover on this webinar, we're first just going to talk about what stress is um, and then how that can become chronic and lead to other um, diseases and chronic conditions. And then what can be done to help uh, manage stress and to prevent chronic stress. In the end, we'll talk about ways for you to have an option to get a, set up an appointment or book a free discovery call. So first off, I just want to pose the question of if stress is good or bad. So um, if you want to take a moment to type in the chat box um, your response to this, that'd be great. I'll give you a second, just say good or bad. Okay, well, that's all right. No one wants to answer it, it's fine. 
Um, it's a bit of a trick question anyways, actually. Um, so a lot of times people think uh, stress is bad because we hear so much about how it can be uh, problematic for our health. But there's actually some good things about stress too. So we'll talk about that. To help us understand how stress is helpful, it's good to actually just understand what stress is. So I'm just going to define it as a normal reaction that the body has when something occurs, a change that occurs in the environment, um, or it, that it's just re reacting to a stimulus that results in a physical, emotional, and intellectual response. So that's pretty general, um, but really what's happening is we're reacting to the environment. There's certain um, hormones that are released and certain physiological things that happen as different parts of our immune, or, sorry, our nervous system become activated with stress. Um, but overall, it can be a good thing when it, because it's designed there to help keep us safe. It's helped to keep us motivated. It's helped to meet, meet deadlines, to um, get out of danger when needed. The problem is it, when it becomes problematic is when it becomes chronic. So just like inflammation, if you've attended any of my, my webinar on inflammation, which is a healing response, it becomes problematic when it becomes chronic and unresolved. So the same situation is true with stress. It's an adaptive mechanism that our body does to respond to changes in the environment. But when we don't relieve that stress is when it becomes problematic. You might be wondering, um, what are some of the symptoms of stress? So these can become uh, when it's chronic, but also when it's acute stress. Um, some of the things you might experience are aches and pains. You see this person on the, stone, uh, on the phone here holding their neck, or there's some tension there. That can be a symptom of stress. Um, feeling of chest tightness or racing heart, like palpitations, can also be a symptom of stress. It can be related to something else, um, so it shouldn't be ignored if it's a pattern that you've noticed. If your heart feeling like it's racing in your chest, it's something um, that you might want to get looked at by a, a cardiologist, but generally it can also just be a symptom of stress. Um, difficulty sleeping, feeling fatigue, headaches, um, high blood pressure, your muscle tension, either in your neck or in your jaw are common places that can be anywhere in your body. Um, digestive issues like um, diarrhea or um, gas and bloating, stomach pains, indigestion, heartburn, um, all can be related to stress. It's not the only thing that could be going on, but it can definitely be a contributing factor. Um, low libido or trouble having sex can also be a, a symptom of stress. And then it can actually also affect your immune system, weakening your immune system, making it prone to infections, um, or if it's long term, even um, cancers can be affected by because your immune system takes care of cancer cells as well. So all of those things can be affected by stress. Uh, and as I alluded to earlier, stress becomes problematic um, when it's chronic. So if you're not relieving that stress on a regular basis, it can also lead to a mental and emotional um, challenges like anxiety, depression, panic attacks, and just excessive sadness or prolonged sadness. So the picture here in that rope just depicting like we, our system can handle a certain amount of, of stress, but when we don't relieve it, it can kind of, we can start to feel like a frayed rope there. And um, it can reduce your ability to handle um, feeling like you can manage those changes in your environment. But the good news is um, that there are things that you can do to help manage your stress on a regular basis. And the key to this is on a regular basis. So it's good to have practices that you do every day, um, even when you're not feeling stressed. And that helps to just make sure that each day you're unloading your, your daily accumulation of stress, just like in the way that you would do other things, um, routines to make good health. Like um, brushing your teeth is a pretty common 
behavior that people have, and that helps to build from the plaque from building up. So having stress management strategies help us to, to keep things from becoming chronic and building up to the point where they really lead issues. Yeah, and that's basically kind of what I just said there. So that just relieving stress on a daily basis helps prevent um, chronic stress, which can lead to chronic illnesses and dif difficulties um, with that. So again, I mentioned I was going to just go over a number of different things, practices that you can do to help manage stress. And I, I encourage you to think about a, one or two of these that you feel like you want to try to start doing on a regular basis to help with your stress management. So the first one here is gratitude. And so um, if many of you maybe heard of using gratitude as a way to help increase happiness, increase um, your sense of well-being, um, used as a treatment for anxiety and depression. It's also just a generally great thing to do to help with managing stress. Um, and really, it's uh, I could have written here a gratitude practice because it is a practice. It is something that you can you can do and on a regular basis, and that as a practice will help you build those neuro pathways that help to reinforce more positive thinking and more positive emotional states. Um, we have in psychology what's known as a negativity bias, and our brains are wired more to find the negative things in our lives and our environment as um, an adaptive response because it helps to keep us safe. Um, if we didn't uh, pay attention to things that trigger alarm, um, it would it would and could affect our safety. But um, sometimes that can be overkill, and when that happens, um, it can lead to when we have more attention to negative things without counteracting it with things like gratitude, it can really be a downward spiral in terms of creating um, negative thinking patterns that can really affect our moods. So gratitude is just a really great way to be aware of all the positive things that happen to us and, and bring attention to them and really savor the hot and the good things in our lives. So here I have a, a list of different ideas that you can start to really try to foster having more gratitude in your life. The first one is to actually have a journal where you write down things that you're grateful for. And you can do this on a regular basis, like every day, write down two or three things that happened that day that you're grateful for. Um, or if you see the next one, I like actually sharing that with a loved one. So at the end of the day, um, just sharing with, with, it can be a partner or a husband or a wife or a friend or a child, anybody in your life that you want to cultivate a deeper relationship with, but also just a attitude of, of gratitude, um, you can share what happened in your day that you're grateful for. And it's a great way to connect and share your day with a positive light. And also I find that when you when I do this, it helps me to really think about the things I'm grateful for throughout the day. So you start looking for them um, and you have an, an eye for them. And so that it's kind of it can be exciting to share those things. And it makes you, uh, helps you to encourage, or encourages you to really savor the good things in your life when you're on the lookout for them, because you want to have some good things to share with your loved one. Which is um, also related to the here I have stop and savor a moment when you have an urge to take a picture. Those are great gratitude moments because a lot of times we, you know, whenever we have a moment where we're like, oh my gosh, this is so pretty, or wow, this is so, that's a great moment. I really want to have a picture of this. Um, taking a moment to really savor and take it in with all your senses, the smell, the sounds, everything um, about that moment, and really savor that moment can really help you to have more gratitude and awareness around the good things in your life. You can always take a picture after you've done that, or maybe you take the picture really quick and then do it. Um, either way, but it's just a, a, an idea to kind of put into your um, way of going about things when you encounter something you have, a, things of beauty or things that you have gratitude for and you want to capture. Okay, so the next thing to help with um, managing stress 
And this is a really big one, um, is regular exercise. So um, if you have a regular exercise practice, you may already know how helpful this can be in terms of just relieving stress, all the endorphins that can get released with exercise uh, that can be really beneficial for uh, improving your sleep as well, which can, when, you, when you're well rested, you're better able to handle stressful stimuli. Um, I did a picture of this person surfing, partly because I wanted to bring to the attention that exercise is different for everybody. It doesn't have to be at the gym. It doesn't have to be um, running or something of this, that nature. It can be something you might not necessarily even think of as exercise. Um, and also that it should be something that you truly enjoy. Because if you are forcing yourself to do an exercise um, that you really don't enjoy, it's going to be really hard for you to be sustainable in doing that on a regular basis. So I encourage people when they're thinking about starting an exercise or want to have continue or um, start exercise in their life, really trying to explore different things you can do that you really enjoy, that bring bring joy to your life, because that's another added benefit of the exercise itself. Is if it, also, if it's social with people that you enjoy, all of those are going to give you more added benefits um, when, you, when you start an exercise program to help with stress management. All right, so the next one is exposure to nature. Um, so this one um, is really fascinating about how there's been a lot of research um, studies coming out recently on the benefit of spending time in nature and our well being. Um, not only our physical well being, in the sense that it helps to improve immune function, and there's been studies showing that spending three days out in nature helps increase nature. Er, natural killer cells, which are the cells that are really important in your immune system for fighting cancer cells, but also any other viruses or bacteria. Um, but also that it just lifts the mood and improves, reduces symptoms of stress, like high blood pressure, um, muscle tension, all of these different things. So um, spending time in nature can be really great for relieving stress, especially if you incorporate doing exercise when you're outside, when that's a possibility. Uh, it can really add an additional benefit to your exercise if you're able to do it outside because of the um, benefit of nature being outside. So I included here um, some other ideas for exposure to nature that aren't as um, as it actually going outside because sometimes we can't always go outside. So bringing nature inside um, can help have a similar benefit. So things like house plants um, in your environment can be really helpful. It has a similar effect um, on the mood when in when you actually just have house plants in, in, in their environment. In addition, you might as well, if you're going to get a house plant, you might as well get one that has been shown to improve air quality. So I listed over here a number of um, house plants that have been studied and proven to improve air quality and also um, detoxify the air, removing volatile compounds of the air and um, really doing you a favor there. So this is a, a peace lily here pictured, um, a common house plant that's not too difficult to keep alive. Um, but some other ones that are pretty simple is jade. You really just have to water it like once a week. The Boston fern, um, aloe vera, which you can also use for things like sunburns, spider plants. If you don't know what a spider plant is, um, they are beautiful little plants that you can easily, once you have one, they create these little um, babies that you can cut off and give to your friends. And so that's also really fun. Um, so think creatively when you think about um, exposure to nature. It doesn't have to be going outside. Even pictures of nature scenes um, have a similar effect. So pictures of mountains, pictures of lakes, whatever it is that you like, having those in your, in your environment of where you are um, sitting by a window, looking out a window, all of that can really help with stress management and increase your exposure to nature. Um, and here's another one for uh, 
for exposure to nature in the way of smells. So they found in some research that natural um, fragrances from plants, which are essential oils, or concentrated oils from plants that have different properties, but one is aromatherapy, it can be used for aromatherapy. So having the smell of um, lavender or pine or citrus in your living space or your workspace can really help to um, improve, reduce stress and improve um, mood as well. So, you know, uh, thinking of outside the box when you think about ways to expose yourself to nature and natural fragrances. In addition, they're much safer than some of the synthetic fragrances that you see for people like plug-in, um, uh, things that you people use for deodorizers and things like that that are actually quite toxic and can affect the called endocrine disruptors because they affect the hormone system of the body. And so really, if you have anything like artificial fragrances in your um, home or in your workspace, I would really recommend replacing those with more natural fragrances such as essential oils. Um, for the added benefit of um, those natural fragrances are going to stimulate the um, sense of, in your brain of being outside and also not have the detrimental effects of those synthetic chemicals that you find in like plug-ins or artificial fragrances. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, so the next one is avoiding information overload. So we live in an age, the information age. Never before in history have we been exposed to so many forms of media all the time. Um, so we really have to be careful about safeguarding our mental health around this. That if we're constantly um, being bombarded with emails or um, you know, social media, uh, news feeds, all of these things, um, knowing what's going on all over the world, all of the time is really, we're not meant to process that kind of information. We need breaks from it. So um, having boundaries around the time when you're available to be reached, um, or when you're available to read your emails or look at the news or listen to the news, um, Look at your social media. Having having border, uh, boundaries around this can really help with your um, not getting into that mode of information overload. It can be really detrimental to our ability to manage stress. Like we're not meant to be oh, stimulated all the time with information uh, the way that we are. So taking breaks, um, you know, maybe you take a weekend and you let people know like. Here, if you need to, if it's an emergency, you can get a hold of me. Um, I really like to do backpacking trips for this reason because you go somewhere where maybe you don't have cell phone reception and it's just like this most beautiful respite from all of the information that is bombarding us all the time. And even if it's just um, deciding at 7 p.m. we're going to turn our phones off. If you have a job that really doesn't allow that, then you, you know, there's exceptions and ways around it. but. You have to do what you can within your, your framework and really take charge of that um, for your own well-being. The other thing is to be selective about the actual types of media that you expose yourself to on a regular basis. And one thing to do is take inventory of how you feel after you've exposed yourself to something. So, you know, you might even write it down just like a spreadsheet or some way of keeping track of like every time I look at my newsfeed, I feel happy, I feel sad, I feel anxious, I feel angry, whatever it is. And then just kind of looking at that and becoming aware of like how that's influencing your stress response, how it's influencing your overall well being. And not to say that you wouldn't completely walk, stop listening to certain media sources or reading certain media sources, you would just maybe do it less or try to balance it out with some positive things as well just to kind of um, have an awareness and be more intentional around what we expose ourselves to since we have so much choice in that area. All right, so then uh, another wonderful stress relieving, stress management strategy is companion or therapy animals. And so there's been a lot of studies showing the benefits of having pets in our lives for multiple reasons. Um, one actually is it improves your health of your microbiome, um, 
which is all of the different bacteria and viruses and fungus that live in our colons, on our skin, in our hair, um, that is so important for maintaining our immune function, for uh, mental health, um, met healthy metabolism, healthy digestion. So pets help us with that. But they also just to help to remind us um, to laugh. Um, they remind us to, to play. They remind us to not take life so seriously. Um, and also they actually help to lower blood pressure when we pet them. Um, they help us to feel more connected, more feelings, sense of um, connection and, and, and uh, unconditional love, of course. So uh, this is a picture of my um, puppy happy intentionally um, because that's what she she does is to remind me to smile and to laugh and she certainly does that um, yeah so if you're able to have a pet in your life if it works for your lifestyle or you can make it work for your lifestyle it's a really great way to help relieve stress all right so this next one is an exercise um, it's it's kind of inspired by a technique, a mindful self-compassion break developed by psychologist Kristen Neff and Chris Germer. Um, they do research on the effects of compassion towards yourself. This isn't the exact mindfulness compassion break, but it's similar. The first step is that you basically want to scan your body and recognize areas of tension or discomfort to just become aware of where you are feeling stress in your body or what emotion you might be experiencing. And then you can take a few deep breaths just to, to help relieve some of that stress, um, bring awareness to it. And then the second thing is to just offer yourself compassion. So recognizing that it's a challenging moment and that you can offer yourself compassion. And to do that in an actual tangible way is the most effective thing to do. So you, you can do that by actually giving yourself a hug, um, putting your hands on your face, putting your hands on your heart. All of those things actually shift your nervous system away from the stress response and, into, and activates the part of your nervous system that releases oxytocin, which is a hormone or a neurotransmitter that helps to um, give us a sense of safety, of connection, of love, and um, make us be in a state that's much more able to handle stressful situations, um, or at least get us out of that um, mode. And also practicing saying a kind phrase to yourself, that, like similar to what you would to a dear friend that came to you with a problem that was in pain. Um, a lot of us get programmed or um, end up actually having the opposite effect uh, when we talk to ourselves when we're, when we're suffering or very critical of ourselves and maybe um, not very kind. But actually implementing being kind to ourselves is much better approach and research supports that it is much better for our long-term and short-term health to have compassion for ourselves just like we do other people. And that feels, can feel unnatural at first um, because it requires practice um, and it requires rewiring some old patterns of, in the brain, but the brain is able to, it's neuroplastic, it has this concept of neuroplasticity, meaning that it can be remodeled with practices. So everything you, you do, you, you, you're reinforcing. So practicing this, something like this can be really helpful. So maybe you decide this is one of the things that you wanna practice. And so at the end, I do have some resources of where you can find a little bit more information about mindful self-compassion but this is just one kind of get showing you some information there. All right, this one is probably one of my favorite ones. Um, it's a breathing exercise. There's many different breathing exercises, but I really like this one because um, it's easy to learn. Uh, you always have your breath with you. It's poor, so it's portable, um, it's free once you learn how to do it. Um, there's no special equipment that you need, and you can do it without people even noticing sometimes if you need to. 
And um, it doesn't take very long to really have a powerful shift in your nervous system away from the fight or flight and into the rest and restore mode um, that we really all need to be in more often than we are in our modern world and lifestyle. So I actually want to have, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate this and I invite you to do it with me um, just because I want you to experience how helpful it can be. Um, if you're not used to breathing deeply, um, there are, it is some practice involved in this because we have a muscle that goes across the bottom part of our lungs called the diaphragm. And it, like any muscle, if you're not used to using it, it gets, it's not as strong. So with practice, you can build up that muscle. But most people breathe up here in their chest, kind of shallow without practice, but we want to really practice breathing. I don't know if you can, if you can see, but you want to breathe from your abdomen using your diaphragm when you breathe. So a good way to kind of increase your awareness around that is to um, actually put your hands on your chest, one hand on your chest and one on your abdomen and be aware and notice where your hands are rising. Is it in your chest or in your stomach first? Um, so we'll go ahead and work through this exercise. You're going to breathe in through your nose and then hold it for, for a count of four. And then you hold it for a count of six. And then we'll exhale for a count of eight, for a count of eight through the mouth like this. So um, I will go ahead and breathe in. And then hold it. And then exhale. I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Holding. And then exhale. And one more time. So hopefully um, you did that along with me and you're, you you felt some shift in your nervous system. If you didn't, that's okay. You can do it later or, um, yeah. It might. And so anyway, it's something that is really great for shifting your nervous system. And so how I recommend that people do this is do it for four cycles twice a day until that starts to feel pretty comfortable um, and then increase it to eight cycles twice a day and start experimenting with doing it throughout your day um, whenever you're starting to feel a little bit stressed um, to do the exercise. And it's a great way to kind of use it throughout your day to diffuse any stress that you might be accumulating as the day goes on. It doesn't take very long. All right, and then this one um, is fun. So surrounding yourself with happy people whenever possible. So of course, you know, we have some control over this and some not control over this, but being intentional around trying to increase people that really um, are happy, it has been shown to increase your own happiness. And the reason behind this is that there's something called a mirror neurons and they're in your brain and they help us. They basically, why we're empathetic or we're capable of being um, empathetic is that when we see somebody who's sad, we often feel a little sad ourselves. And the same thing is true for happiness. Um, so being around happy people is going to help you just to have more happiness yourself. The other thing is smiling. Um, even if you don't feel happy, um, sometimes just smiling actually stimulates the release of neuropeptides and neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which are associated with um, reward and pleasure and happiness. So, you know, the concept of fake it until you make it, sometimes there's some actual research behind it that helps with this. Context that I like to use this is um, when I'm doing a, a workout that I'm really not having that much fun in terms of like it's a couple repetitions and it's really burning, but I'm enjoying the exercise overall, but there's a moment where, wow, this is, I don't really want to do one more push up. Uh, and, and I smile and it really does help make it more fun. So that's just one way to do this, but also just practicing um, making sure you smile every day and making sure you laugh. And one last thing I'll say about that is there's something called laughter yoga. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of that, but there's actually clubs 
of people, organizations of people who get together intentionally just to laugh. And at first you start laughing, it's kind of um, almost dramatic and sort of silly where you're like, um, theatrical, I guess is the word I wanted to use, where you pretend laughing at something and then everybody else in the room starts laughing because you're all pretend laughing, but before you know it, you're like really laughing because the whole situation is just so kind of ridiculous. The, and also just because of the way that laughter is contagious. So um, it's it's kind of, I've never actually personally done it in terms of gone, gone to a laughter yoga thing but I have done it with like friends of mine and just, it, it definitely is pretty funny um, and makes you feel really good. There's nothing like a good laugh to help relieve stress. And um, it doesn't really matter how you do it, if it's watching a funny show um, or whatever it is, but it can be really great for helping to relieve stress and sometimes just remembering the power of a good a laugh and a smile. It's really simple, um, but really powerful. Uh, the next one is acupuncture for just as a stress management strategy. Um, you can do acupuncture for treating certain conditions, um, very specific, but also it's really great for um, stress relief um, and anxi for anxiety, or even if you just want to do it on a regular basis. If you've never tried acupuncture for this reason, um, I really recommend it. We have an acupuncturist at Whole Health Wellness Center that's really exceptional. and um, so if you haven't tried acupuncture, it's definitely something to consider uh, giving a try. And um, cool. All right, meditation practice. Okay, so some people, when they hear meditation, a lot of times they're like, oh yeah, I tried to do that and I just, it's very challenging, I'm not good at it. Um, and that's a very common response because um, there's a misconception a little bit about meditation, how you're supposed to not think and quiet your mind. You are supposed to try to focus your mind, but you're still going to have repetitive, you're still going to have thoughts. Meditation is the practice of becoming aware of when you're having thoughts that wander and bringing them back to whatever it is that you're, you're um, trying to focus on. Oftentimes your breath or it can be various things depending on um what it is that you're the type of meditation but in terms of when you first start a practice there's certain things you can do to help you out um starting for a short duration um for a couple times a day can be really helpful um incorporating it into your routine when you do it in the morning and the evening part of your routine can be helpful in terms of getting the practice going and then the other thing is to use biofeedback um, to get a firsthand experience of what it feels like to be kind of in that more meditative state and when your nervous system is more in balance, just to get a little bit of guidance when you're first starting out. And so biofeedback, well, what is that? Um, it, it's an umbrella term to describe a lot of different things, um, technologies that help us to become aware of how our thoughts affect our physiology. And the one I use at Whole Health is called HeartMath. And you can sort of see in this picture, it's a software program um, that monitors your heart rate through this probe that's on um, the, the ear here, as you can see. And it looks at how your heart rate variability is when you're doing um, some breathing exercises that help to get your heart rate variability um, nice and balanced in your nervous system in balance. So it's really something you have to experience um, to really know what I'm, what I'm saying, but I'm trying to explain just kind of so you get a sense of what it is. It's a little simple um, strategy to get your nervous system to kind of become more in balance and increase your heart rate variability. Um, and biofeedback has a wide range of applications, um, including chronic pain, um, anxiety, depression, difficulty with sleeping, high blood pressure, chronic fatigue, improves the immune system, um, with, so reducing infections, can help with headaches, and migraines, abdominal pain. Um, it can even help with weight loss, especially when it's related to uh, when, when you're at stress, uh, is helping or preventing you from losing. So lots of different ways that can help us out. Basically, it's helping with treating chronic stress, essentially. 
Um, and here I just was saying that biofeedback or more specifically heart math um, is used all over the world by thousands of healthcare professionals from places um, like the Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic. It's also used in the workplace. It's used in NASA. Um, so it's widely used by very um, reputable companies and clinics all over the world. And it has a lot of research, um, over 50 studies supporting its use and how it can be helpful for managing stress and um, other uh, and chronic disease. A couple other things just in terms of diet for helping with stress reduction. Make sure you're eating the rainbow, lots of um, bioflavonoids, antioxidants, and, and colorful foods just help with oxidative stress on the body. So eating five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, um, also reducing our exposure to things, oxidants, the things that cause um, damage to our bodies, pesticides, herbicides, cigarette smoking, pollution, solar radiation, that all contributes to our need for antioxidants. Um, but by getting those, we're helping reduce inflammation, we're keeping our nervous system healthy um, on a cellular level so that we're more able and more resilient in the face of stress. Another thing that's really great for, anti or for an anti-inflammatory effect is omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil. Um, so this picture there can really help protect the brain and the nervous system. And the other one for um, stress relief and ox uh, inflammation reduction is the, the Theralite or the red light therapy that we have at Whole Health Wellness Center. Um, it, it's this device here that it's a full body um, device that you lay in and it allows you to get uh, full body coverage of this red light. Uh, looks kind of like a tanning bed, but it doesn't have UV light. It's ultraviolet red light and uh, red light that helps without the harmful UV. And um, show you here how it works. Basically, is it works on these mitochondria, which are these energy, um, cellular energy uh, producing um, organelles that are in each cell. And what they do is the red light helps to stimulate them for better uh, metabolic energy process. And then that helps with cell turnover, proliferation, which helps in the healing cycle and reducing inflammation. And inflammation can uh, like affect all areas of the body, um, but not uh, including the brain. So when, we're, when we are um, improving inflammation or reducing inflammation in the body and the nervous system and the brain, we're helping our body's ability to handle um, stress, stresses and stress. Um, and then just a word on digestion and how stress can affect our digestion. Um, because if you remember from the previous slide, some of the symptoms of chronic stress or stress can be digestive issues. Partly because um, the nervous system, when it's in the, the sympathetic or the fight or flight mode, directs blood away from the digestive system. We, really, we, we release less stomach acid and digestive enzymes when we're not in the parasympathetic or the rest and restore mode, um, which can lead to other digestive issues um, and poor absorption of nutrients. And when we have poor absorption of nutrients, we don't have the amino acids that we need to make neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. Um, if we're, our digestion is sluggish and we're constipated, we end up recycling or not excreting a lot of toxins and hormones, and that can lead to hormone imbalances that can really affect um, our mental health and our ability to handle stress as well. So if your digestion is not um, optimal if you're having diarrhea, constipation, gas and bloating, um, anything like that, then it's, it could be affecting your body's ability to handle stress and also be a stressor on your body. So definitely shouldn't be, shouldn't be overlooked. Um, if you're having any of those issues, you definitely want to see um, some, a practitioner to get that worked up and um, resolved. All right, so um, we're, that is the summary, or that is concludes all the different strategies I was going to share with you this evening. Um, I'd like to pause for a moment here if there's anybody that has any questions about any of the strategies that we talked about, or maybe you'd like to share uh, one of the things that you're hoping to 
implement in your routine. I'd love to hear that if you want to pop it in the chat, um, maybe to encourage other people as well. So feel free to do that. So uh, otherwise, though, I just want to say uh, thanks for joining us. And here I, I'm uh, hoping that you're feeling inspired to take charge of your, your health and really implementing some help manage your stress. Um, and just know that this that can be the very beginning of um, what we really aim for in naturopathic medicine, is, which is determining um, and correcting any underlying things, any causes with causing your uh, symptoms. And treating those, not just the not treating the causes, not just the symptoms. Sometimes that means ordering tests. For example, if you have some digestive issues, you might want to order some tests to figure that out. Some hormone imbalances, how that can affect our stress response as well. And then uh, finding the the right plan for you, um, because not the one plan isn't right for everyone. Sometimes we have um, other things that we that each person is an individual. So I help. We try to help to strategize and find a plan that's going to work for you um, and, and give you support along the way. Uh, there was a question I want to answer. Uh, Cynthia asking if red light um, therapy can help with arthritis. And yeah, it can be helpful for arthritis um, because it helps with inflammation. Um, there are certain restrictions for who should try um, if, yeah, infrared, for example, like people with seizure disorders, um, some cancers, uh, things of that nature. But if you're interested in it, definitely um, give a call to the office and let them know and then they can talk to you about it. Um, and then another question, can whole health help determine hormone imbalances? Yes. Uh, we can do a variety of different kinds of testing, um, either through blood testing or also one of the tests I like to order is the Dutch test or dried urine test that it gives us a very um, comprehensive look at hormones and the sex hormones as well as some of the other hormones um, to see if there's any imbalances there and then figuring out um, a whole body approach to addressing them as is appropriate for the situation. So yeah, thank you for asking that. Great. Uh, okay, here's just another inspiration slide. Here's, uh, this is my dog, Happy Again, and just kind of excited about what is your purpose and what, why do you want to feel the best that you can? And so reflecting on that can sometimes help motivate um, changing behavior. So if you want to Take a moment to really think about that too, or maybe write it down after watching this presentation. That'd be wonderful. Another question, offer massage manual. No, we don't have a massage therapist um, at our clinic, but we would be able to make referrals. Um, we do have an, a chiropractor and a, he's also an acupuncturist, but no massage. All right, and so then here's now is your opportunity when this conversation, when the presentation ends, you'll be able to have, there's a button you can push to um, set up a free call with one of our team members um, to see if naturopathic medicine might be a good fit for you. Um, you can talk about what's going on for you and what practitioner um, can, how they can help you and uh, prepare for your first appointment. Um, and then if you, if you decide that naturopathic medicine is something you want to try, to expect in your um, first consultation, we can do them virtually or in person. I like to recommend doing them in person, at least for your first visit, but it's totally up to you. You can do it either way. We accept uh, most insurances. They're at the Cigna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Um, and then there's also some exceptions. So if you're questioning that, then um, you can call and ask about that too. And our first visit is an hour-long visit where we really do uh, a comprehensive assessment and um, gathering of your history to figure out the first step in your care plan. Um, all right. So, yeah, we, I, I really hope you feel inspired by this. We can help you feel your best and change your life. And uh, I'd love to have a conversation with you. So at the end of this, um, we, you'll be able to sign up for a free discovery call, or if you feel ready, you can 
uh, don't need, if you don't feel like you need the discovery call, you can call the office and make your first appointment as well. Um, Tim had a question about, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, that got answered, I think, so. Um, all right, and then here's the last page with some of the resources that I mentioned. So um, you can see here the compassion exercises. That would be the mindful self-compassion I mentioned. Um, and then the couple other ones, if you were interested in how Theralite works, um, the plants the with the um, different plants that have the air purifying properties, heart math science, the, the research that supports the biofeedback, um, as well as a book here that has a lot of different ideas um, about ways to manage stress that I um, borrowed some of those ideas too. So anyway, I thank you so much everyone for joining us. I hope you have a good, good luck with starting some of these strategies and we will see you uh, another time hopefully. And so when I end this call, you'll be able to sign up for your um, discovery call. All right, thank you so much and have a good night. Bye-bye.